Since last year, our team at Florida 24 has been bringing you stories about the complexities of immigration in our state. Our reporter Sophia Hernandez took a trip down to the Florida Keys to see what reality has been like recently and how it's expected to change once again. You've seen the pictures. Hundreds of migrants aboard homemade vessels all trying to make their way to the Florida Keys' shores. It's been a common place where we've encountered migrant landings. Uh, throughout the past year. Chief Border Patrol agent Adam Hoffner with U.S. Customs and Border Protection takes us to a hot spot in Marathon called Sombrero Beach. About a month ago, we had a migrant landing here. But since, it's been fairly quiet. In the last uh, two months, we have seen a, a, we still have some movement and some, you know, legal maritime migration coming from Cuba here in the Keys, but it has slowed down in comparison to the uh, the new year. According to CBP, since October 1st of last year, agents have responded to 280 migrant landings in Florida. That's about 5,000 migrants. Compared to the fiscal year of October 2021 to October of last year, they have more than 2,500 encounters on land, close to 100 maritime encounters. The question is, why is there a slowdown? Policy changes and things like that can definitely have an impact. Hoffner is referring to the parole program enacted at the start of this year that allows Cubans, Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, and Haitians to fly to the U.S. and remain for up to two years, as long as they have an eligible sponsor supporting them. The Department of U.S. Homeland Security also stated in the beginning of May that they would be resuming repatriation flights. Policies, because they've changed so much, I know when I've spoken to migrants, a lot of them, they don't know a lot of like either what Florida's rules are or federally what the rules are. Like when you encountered these migrants, like what is almost kind of just the consensus? We've certainly seen a mix of emotions. Some may be not informed. We really work hard with our partners to put messages on social media, whether it's a news release or updates on, you know, on the status or what kind of happens with each case. We're very active. Um, essentially, um, they may come with some mixed emotions and, and, and uh, we understand, however, uh, the, the, the sea, the journey at sea is extremely dangerous, so you know, our, the focus of our messaging is to not take to the seas, it's very dangerous, and to, you know, if there is a, a legal pathway, that's what we encourage. Hoffner shows us the reality. For the entire stretch of the Florida Keys, there's roughly two agents driving the roads at a time. The department also scours hundreds of private and public boat ramps like this one. Talk with community members, boaters, um, do inspections of inbound or outbound vessels that are going to foreign territory, things like that, and you know, look for anything that uh, you know, suspicious or anyone that's transporting anything. It's all hands on deck. The agency relies on good Samaritan calls, plus local and state partners to help them respond to calls for landings that happen during the day and at night. When you get that call, when somebody says that they've spotted so, a migrant, what do you do? So essentially when we respond to a case like here, and let's say, for example, a, a migrant landing that happens here, our agents will respond on scene. Typically we'll have support from our partner agencies. But when we arrive, like with anyone, we have to secure the scene, uh, safety of the people around and the people who are on board the vessel. So uh, our priority mission is national security. The second focus is on humanitarian need. Florida, the Keys in particular, face an interesting challenge, having water on all sides. Title 42, a pandemic era law that allowed agents at the border to turn away migrants because of potential health risk, didn't apply to our maritime borders. Instead, holding cells in this marathon office were full to capacity. Migrants were repatriated, given a court date, or transferred to an ICE facility. But now, the holding cells, which we aren't allowed to show on camera, have been empty for days. Since the spike, the department's made some changes. After hundreds of migrants landed in the Dry Tortugas and Marquesas Key in January of this year, CBP assigned agents to solely cover those offshore areas. The agency also now has contracted medical staff assigned to their headquarters to be able to medically screen migrants by the hundreds for motion sickness, dehydration, or falling on the rough seas. Like anything with our operations, we we adjust, we sit down, and we you know uh, strategize on how we can best you know, uh, allocate our resources, you know, to, um, you know, to counter these increases in what we see. While things have tapered off, Hoffner says they are expecting landings to ramp back up now that we are in the summer months. They are ready to respond whenever is needed.
Sophia Hernandez, Florida 24 Network. And stick with Florida 24 Network. Sophia's reporting continues Tuesday from the waters off the Florida Keys. How the decline in migrant landings has impacted day-to-day -day patrols at sea.